I think another huge factor is stress load. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I kept telling my husband during the early days of COVID, my friends who did not receive the intervention, I kept up with them and I was, I almost would quiz them because if, as people came down with it, I, with the virus, I would say like, how sick did you get? Because I wanted to know how my friends who were receiving the intervention versus not, I wanted to see how they were doing. And yeah. nine times out of 10, the people who got really sick were, I'm talking non-intervention, uh, they were all sleep deprived. They were all significantly mm -hmm. sleep deprived and going through, whether they felt stressed or not, they were putting a lot of stress on their bodies for various reasons, whether it be a lot of travel, heavy workload, what have you. Um, stress and sleep deprivation are like, monstrously devastating to people. And then literally like a week ago, I saw a study on folks and they, they literally linked it up to sleep deprivation and severity of COVID outcomes. So yeah, like sleep, sleep's a huge fact. And talk about sleep and yeah. blood sugar regulation. Oh gosh. So <laughs> it's massive. I mean, sleep, sleep is, is very much up there with how much carbohydrate are you taking? You know, how much insulin dose are you on? What is your, what's your body weight? What's your BMI? What's your waist circumference? Like there's factors. I mean, there's things even like humidity and, and the temperature and menstrual cycle status, but that, but that's a big one. You know, I would say there's kind of small factors that all influence blood glucose, stress, sleep, Anytime I do public speaking, you guys can see my, my CGM. It just, it, it goes up, right? Anytime I'm sleep deprived, there's an arrow up. Like that's just what happens. It's, it's just kind of um, the nature of it. So yeah, it's huge. Yeah, it's huge. It's a big player. And just a few hours of sleep deprivation will start to put you in a more insulin resistant state. So absolutely. It's wild. Yeah. So yeah, let's, let's go back to that just a second, because I want to make sure people really understand this. We're talking about type 1 diabetes over here so far as having to substitute the insulin because the pancreas is no longer making it because an autoimmune process has damaged the pancreas and the carbohydrate load that the person's taking in and, and the sleep and the stress and all of those factors are variables. But then over here, we have this huge piece of the puzzle that I really want to emphasize, which is how sensitive are your cells to the insulin? And I know we talked about it, but I just want people to understand when we say you can go from type one to type two, this is what we're talking about because you could be doing everything right. But if you don't have good muscle mass, you're not exercising, you're not eating well, and you're not taking good care of yourself, like I know you do, then you could be having this horrendous insulin resistance on this side. And so no matter how good you are about this stuff over here, then suddenly you're thrust in. And this is going to happen again as estrogen wanes, we are going to become more insulin resistant as, as we do. And that same thing happens to men as their testosterone starts to go down in middle age. So like this is a really important, most of my audience I think is probably in that middle age category. This is a really important factor I want folks to take home because that's just even more emphasis to, and, and inspiration to like do the healthy things, like you have to do all the healthy things and it's a job, yeah. but it's yeah. a job we all have to do, whether we're type one diabetic or not, like we all have to take our metabolic health very seriously in middle age. Yeah. Yeah. If there's two things type ones should worship is Frederick Banting. He, you know, he came up with insulin and your muscle mass, like that, that's the second to insulin as to what's going to keep you healthy for a long life and have very few complications, if any, like that, that's it <laughs> right there. I love it. I love it. That's so perfect. I think we should wrap it up with that because I don't think there's a better emphasis that we could, we <laughs> could land on towards the end. Well, I so love talking to you and I think we could do this for hours. You need to write a book, first of all. <laughs> please. Okay, write I'll get write on the book, put it on Kindle and get it out to the world because I think your message is so important. 